Welcome. In this video, we are going to look at some GraphQL examples in Gatsby Starters. Now, this is a great place to look because Gatsby Starters not only show us how to lay out our components and hard-coded pages, which we've looked at already, but also to hook up dynamic data and pull that in using GraphQL. So to start off our exploration here, I actually want to start with our Hello World Starter because that's the simplest one. So if I CD into my Hello World Starter and I run Gatsby Develop, I should get the normal local host starting up that I have gotten and looked at before. So I could see once it has run, we have our normal local host and I could open that up in the browser here, but we also have what we haven't looked at yet, the graphical GraphQL extension here, and that's gonna be at underscore, 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 under, three underscores, GraphQL. So we pull that up and I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger just so that we could see everything that's going on here. I'm gonna open up our Explorer and the docs off to the side, although this is a lot, we'll kind of narrow down our focus as we learn more about this. It gives some general information, including what an example might look like, as well as the keyboard shortcuts. I encourage you to play around with those, but really I wanna jump in and show you how we could duplicate what we looked at before by coming into all site page inside of the edges there, and not next, but the node and pulling up the ID and the path. So we click this icon here, the play button to run it, and we can see that we have a home page and a 404 page. Now, if we come back into our code, we'll see that we don't actually have under source a 404 page. Gatsby is going to, let me close these down to make it a little bit clear. Gatsby is going to automatically create a dev 404 page and use that whenever we don't have an actual page for what has been queried. So this is gonna be the default one and you could override it by doing the 404 there. So that is going to show up because Gatsby knows about it. We also have our index page, which we've created. And if we were to add another page here, it would automatically find that as well. Now the Hello World Starter doesn't actually take any GraphQL and put it into Gatsby. All it's relying on is you have a page under pages and it will automatically find that page. So we know from past examples that if we started creating other pages, they would show up here. So that's our Hello World example. Not too much from that, but it gets us familiar with this graphical interface and how to play around with that. I suggest that you open this up and in the Explorer, look through all the different types of things. There won't be a ton in here, but you could begin to see and get an idea of some of what's possible, as well as how to play with filtering, sorting, and stuff like that. However, we're not gonna see too much from this particular example. So so let's close down this server and let's come back out into our main area here and let's go to our first project which was actually set up using the Gatsby default starter so when you don't specify a specific starter and you just say Gatsby new then it's going to set up um, using that default starter so let's go ahead and CD into our first project here and run Gatsby develop and we could see that this has booted up. We could see our site here, which of course doesn't have that page, but remember this one, go back to the homepage. So we have these two pages inside of source. We have our uh, 404, which is customized there. And we also have our index and our page two. So if we come into graphical now, I'm gonna open this up all the way. And you have scheme on the side. I don't generally use this as much. I like the explorer or just typing in um, here already. And we have a few more options than we did last time. However, let's try the same query of going into all site pages, into the edges, grabbing a specific node and getting the ID and path again. We'll run that and we can see we've got our default 404, we've got our overridden 404, and then we've got our different pages that it has created. We could see our index page and our page two as well there. Okay, now we could also get some other data here. So we haven't looked at this before, but I'm gonna come down into site. I'm actually gonna close this, which will remove this query. I'm gonna come into site and we can see here that we've got site metadata. I'll zoom in a little bit. And inside of that, we've got author, description, and title. And if I query this, we could see we've got our site metadata, author at, Jats at Gatsby, uh, description, and a title. Now, where is this coming from? If we come back into our first project here and we look under our Gatsby configuration file. Let's make a little bit more room here. We can see that we have something set up, an object called site metadata. Now it did this for us. We didn't do this, but in our original one that we looked at last time, the hello world, you can see there is no 
Gatsby config information here. So there's nothing there set up for it for Gatsby to read. However, in your Gatsby config, if you set up an object and export it called site metadata, and you put a title, description, and author, then this will be able to automatically query that data for you and get it. Now, also, unlike our Hello World starter, this default starter actually takes this query and will use it in the theme. So if I come into my theme here, or my Gatsby project, and I look at the layout, which is the basic layout file, we could see here at the top that it's using something called static query. Let's give ourselves a bit more space. So it has imported static query from Gatsby. And right here it has our static query, query, GraphQL backticks at the beginning. This is really common. Whenever you see uh, GraphQL in our code, it's usually going to be surrounded by backticks. And then we have the exact query that we had over here. We can see that we're, or we're not getting the author or description. We're just getting the title. And then later on down in our data, we could come in and say data, site, site metadata, title, which is going to be this information, which is going to be this information from the query, which originally was set inside of our Gatsby config. Now we can't just go up setting variables wherever we want. Site metadata is something specific to Gatsby that we're gonna learn to work with, and it's really common to use. However, this solves the problem that we had with the last project we did, our second project, where we were trying to hard code in the name of our site on every single page. So in this site, no matter how many pages you build, as long as they're using that same layout, they will all have the name of the site at the top. And if this were to change, we would see that that information changes. So it is dynamic. All right, so this is the example using the default Gatsby starter. Let's look at one more example, and now let's come into our blog starter. So if you remember, this one was a little bit more complex. Oh, got a CD back. Now I can go into blog starter, and let's run Gatsby develop there to pull it up. Okay, so now that it's running, we could check out our site and the new graphical interface. So I'll just refresh this, and this is what our site looks like. We could see we've got those posts that we created, and remember, we did this in Markdown. Our blog starter has a content folder with blog, and you could set up all the different folders that you want and put your blog post in Markdown. So that's how they set this up. And of course, it means if we come into graphical now, and I'm gonna expand this again, go into a little bit more depth, we could see we now have even more options. And one of these options is all Markdown Remark. Now, in order to get Markdown files that can be queried with GraphQL inside of Gatsby does require some plugins. And we will look at those plugins as we kind of recreate everything in these starters on our own. However, this is why these starters are nice because they already have this set up for us. So we could come into Edges, Node, and then let's start off getting the ID, the HTML, and the excerpt. And we'll just go ahead and return that. We could see that we've got all of this marked down for one. And then we come down, we have another one. In fact, let's do this a little bit different. Let's take off the HTML. And remember, these have some special formatting that allows us to use what's called front matter. So anything inside of these three dashes here at the top of our markdown files, like the title and the date, these are going to be called front matter, and we can come in and query those as well. So I'll remove the HTML and we'll query that front matter. Now we can see, okay, they all have unique IDs, which is cool. We've got an excerpt, we've got our new beginnings, so we've got our titles as well here. Now we could also filter these if we wanted to filter these by, let's say, the front matter title, and we wanted to make sure that that was equal to hello world. Again, we'll look at more of how to do all of this as we learn GraphQL. I'm just kind of showing some examples as we go along. Notice that only gets our hello world post, or we could switch it to is not equal to hello world. And we could see we have all of our posts except hello world. We could also, instead of filtering it, we could limit it. So let's just limit it to two posts and we could get the latest two posts. And if we were to unlimit that, uh, we can see they're gone. And again, you can see that all of the filtering and sorting happens inside of these right here. Okay, we could also sort these. So if we wanted to come in and sort them, we could find a certain field and we actually want to look for the metadata date. So let's see, internal. 
Uh, so we come down under front matter date and we could see then that we could sort them and the order can either be ascending. So that has the hello world first and the new last. And then if we check descending, we could see that it's got new first and these last. Now you over time will learn how to just type all of these. However, this explorer makes it really nice for us to get started with how to filter these. Now I highly suggest again, that you take some time with this default starter and you explore all of this different play and all of this different stuff here. However, let me uncheck the sorts and come down so again, we just have maybe the title ID and the excerpt. Uh, we would also get the HTML and other stuff. Now, searching the all markdown, getting those edges and the node, and then getting specific content from it, including the front matter, this query, again, is used inside of the starter. That is how it's going to be getting all of these. So let's go look at how that is used. All right, so let me take you at a high level through how all of this site is created using GraphQL. First, in our GraphQL node, I told you that this was a common place. You could see, and you might not understand everything. Again, we're showing working examples first, then we'll build it all once we have a bit of a frame of reference. You can see we're creating a bunch of pages here. So in our Gatsby node is a common thing to create pages dynamically. We're going to get all of our blog posts and create pages for them. So we say, set up our create pages. We have a template that we're going to use. So inside of source templates, this template here is what controls what an individual blog post looks like. So the title here, the content, how it's formatted, the date. So for example, if I just wanted to pull out the date, you could see that that date is gone. We'll put it back in there. But this is the template we want to use. So in our Gatsby config, oh, sorry, our Gatsby node, we would first figure out what template we want to use, and then we get this GraphQL query. And inside of it, you could see we go into all markdown and they're sorting it a bit. So they're gonna sort it by the front matter descending so that we have all, everything going newest to first. If we wanted to do it the other way, we could change that to ascending. And then it's gonna limit to a thousand. Obviously not much pagination going on here. This is something we could look at later. But again, this is not a live query. This happens during the build process. So you might have to wait in the build process for all of this to be created, but the client isn't waiting on the front end for all of this data. Then we come down into our edges and our node again. You can see here just how similar these are. However, they're going in and getting some of the fields like the slug and the front matter. Then with these results, it's coming down for each one of these results data all marked down edges, which is data all marked down edges. They're going to call these posts and circle over each one of them. Then we call the specific function. Remember, we're exporting create pages up here and inside of it, we're going to call a function eventually for each of our pages or posts in this case called create page. We create this page and we'll look at this in more depth later. However, this is some low level Gatsby stuff that will actually create the static file. And we're going to tell it its path, what component to use that we pulled in again from up here, this template. And then we're going to pass it in some data. Like we're going to tell it what slug it is, what the previous post and what the next post is. So this template that we set up, this will be able to tell, hey, what is the actual post that I have that's getting passed in? And then what's the previous post and what's the next post? And it will use that to build our page and then show the previous and next link. So if we come in here, we've got the previous and next links right there. Cool. So this is how GraphQL is used. Now, this might be a little bit overwhelming um, at first to understand. However, once you get going with this and we start putting it all together, it really does create a nice consistent pattern regardless of where your data is coming from because later in further examples and in, or I'm sorry, in further courses, we'll look at how to plug this into content management systems or use all different types of data. And we'll also build in this course um, some markdown content so that you could see how that is done, how this is built here. However, this gives us a pretty good overview of some of the different ways that GraphQL can be used, um, both with querying it using the graphical interface and then inside of our code. We looked at how we could use it in our Gatsby node files, how we could use it inside of page templates. And then we also saw, and I think that there's an example in here in the layout. Maybe it's in a another one. Yep. 
We also saw an example of use static query or a static query where inside of just any random component, we could actually make a GraphQL query, in this case, getting our site metadata. So those are the three common places. We'll see different use cases of this as we go, but I really suggest at this point that you just fire up each one of these in this order. Start with Hello World, then go to the default, and then go to Blog Starter, and just play around with all the different types of data you could get and try to find all the examples in the template and in the code where it's using it. Taking a little bit of this at time will give you a nice high-level overview you might not understand everything, but uh, starting from here, we'll go back and start building some dynamic sites in Gatsby using GraphQL, and it should all begin to make more sense.